All right, so I'm starting to run up my pressure a little bit. I'm not going to go all the way up to 100 PSI, just so I don't leak so much. That's pretty good. Now with my other hand, I'm going to come in here and give these a little tap. It's popping pretty good. You saw it blew a little moisture out. This is a, a rubber hammer, so I won't damage the, the valve uh, stem here. Oh yeah, I even feel that puffing up. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's see if I can tap these. Yeah, that's pretty good. So those seem to be sealing decently well. Come in here and do this last exhaust one. Alright, I'll up that pressure a little bit. Get a real loud pop out of the intake when I do this. And then you can see every time I tap on it. Ooh, look at that. Oh, I just I just dislodged a little something right there. Oh yeah, that's nice, look at that. I'm over here tapping, that was an intake I was tapping on. I was tapping on this intake one, which is where I had that broken rocker. Nice. That's better. I got a little bit leaking right now. If I push down to my injector, look at that. Still got some air leaking out around my injector though. It's not perfect. But look, I got 60 PSI supply and about 55, 56 that's holding. There, and I let go of the injector, see it drops down. So if I could get that injector to seal a little better, and you can hear it's just pissing out all around my hand there. I don't have a great seal. But that's good enough. I mean, look at that. It's, it's building pressure. Okay. Run that down. Okay. So what we found there, this is the first time doing this. I haven't run through this before, so I'm kind of learning my way through it as you're seeing the video. Basically, I had pressure on here, and you saw that I had a lot more supply than I was holding in the cylinder. And there, and there was some leaking out around this, but you heard it, it got worse once... Uh, once I got that valve to seat. So I took my trusty little hammer here. This is a rubber hammer. It's not a nylon end even. It's actually rubber. It's, you know, nice, nice little hammer. You can tap on stuff and not, not destroy something. So when I went around and I just tap on them. So by tapping on them, I simulate pushing down with the cam. I could do this with the uh, cams in place, and I could turn the engine with the timing belt. That's another way to do it. Um, what you saw happen, though, is that this one, on the one that broke, it wasn't sealing good. I was getting leakage there. And finally, once I ran up the pressure a little bit, and I tapped on it, and it got a couple of good taps from me, there's probably some little bit of carbon or something that, uh, that I was able to blow out, because now it's sealing good. It doesn't surprise me that it was on this one either, because that's where I had that broken rocker I had to fish out. And the way that that rocker was broken, that was that was a hard break. It wasn't just the rollers wore down and this thing started running bad all of a sudden. Something happened, and that and that valve actually hit the piston. Now this is an interference engine, so usually that means it bends valves. However, we're lucky here because it broke it, the rockers break instead of the valve bending. Which is nice, because I don't have to pull the head off of this or anything else. I'm, I'm down to the point where I'm like, great. You know, I'd rather have a weak point of being the sacrificial rocker instead of it being um, the valve. And with the way that these are designed, since the you know, cam doesn't push directly onto like, the top of the valve. You know, other, other engines, you go down in here and the lifter will sit right on top of this and uh, fill up and that'll push it down. Um... You know, or, you know, there's a couple other designs out there, you know, the old-fashioned rocker type with a push rod. 
But basically, because this rocker with a roller on it is there, when there's that mechanical interference, the weak point is the rocker. So that rocker breaks instead of, you know, destroying and, you know, bending a, a valve, messing up a piston maybe, you know, cams, all that, that rocker fails. So it's kind of frustrating. It's still an uh, interference engine with a time belt. It's kind of frustrating that that happens, but it's a lot better than the alternative. I mean, how many engines, you know, have we all heard of that have had bent valves from timing belt failures or like, you know, a broken bolt on the time belt tensioner or something like that. And, you know, at least in this case, you don't, you don't trash your whole engine. Your, your long block's still good. Your head and your, uh, your short block, everything is fine. And it's a lot less work to, you know, just pull off this intake. Anyways, so, so that's good news. Uh, that should, that should be a good cylinder. I'll keep working down through the rest of these and we'll see what we find.